Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's been a while since my last sit down. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm no longer doing like a fixed schedule kind of thing. Uh, I just decided it was not great for my mental health. So it's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, but today we are talking all about eBooks and e-readers and all that kind of fun stuff. And I really mainly wanted to do this because I wanted to kind of motivate myself to get back into e-reading. I feel like, I mean, I still do use my e-reader a lot um, just because um, that's how I get a lot of my books. All my library books I get on my e-reader. I also just generally, even before the pandemic, have always preferred using Libby um, and e-books to get my books from the library versus um, waiting for a physical copy um, at the library. So there's that. But anyway, I thought I would make this video kind of share with you my experience with e-reading um, and also just kind of like tips and tricks here and there um, and I'm going to be splitting this up into different parts. I'm going to first cover like pros and cons of e-reading and then I'm going to go into like my thoughts on the whole Kindle versus Kobo versus like a tablet um, approach and then finally if you are looking to get an e-reader um, I am also going to be going over my kind of what you should look for in an e-reader for you because at the end of the day um, the best reading experience is the reading experience that works for you. So a lot of things I'm saying here are the things that work for me um, but I'll also like try to note things that might not work, might work differently for you. It's all personal preference at the end of the day so without further ado let's dive right into the pros of e-reading. I love e-reading. I'm a proud user of an e-reader like a dedicated e-reader um, for over 10 years now. I got my first e-reader when I was 18 years old for my 18th birthday. So um, yeah, it's always like a bit of a fond memory to think back on my first e-reader, which fell apart quite quickly in all honesty and was kind of like partially my fault, but like whatever. Over the years, I've tried a number of different devices for e-reading. So I feel like I have like a good sense of what works and doesn't work for me. So I thought I would like share a little knowledge, I guess. But the number one reason why I, I like I got an e-reader in the first place and why I asked for one for my 18th birthday is because I used to travel a lot when I was younger um, and also I was going off to university at the time um, and I didn't want to lug a lot of books with me and that is the number one I think pro for an e-reader. It is just so portable, it is so convenient, um, you can just have all your books at, like at your fingertips essentially. I remember when I was younger and I used to go travel with my parents um, and we would go on like a week-long trip and I'd have to bring like six or seven books with me because that was when I used to read like a book a day um, and it just took up all the space in my suitcase and so like having an e-reader just frees up so much space and it's just so convenient and easy um, and I think if you are someone who travels a lot or even like if you're someone who commutes a lot um, putting a big book in your bag like is not the most convenient thing especially if you're like me and you like reading chunky fantasies like it's just not feasible to carry around a 700 page book with you everywhere like it's just not um, and so I think for me that's one of the main reasons why I love e-reading. Another thing that I think is a plus is like de obviously depending on your model my current model is actually waterproof so that's pretty cool i don't actually take baths i hate them in theory um but if you're someone who takes baths i think having a waterproof e-reader is pretty cool because then you can just like go in the bath you don't have to worry about the pages getting wet all that kind of fun stuff the other main thing that for me i prefer e-reading for um over traditional like paper paper books um is actually the dictionary function so i you know, don't have the most brain cells. I often read books where I just don't know what the words are. And if I'm reading physical books, if I come across a word that I don't know, I will just skip over it. And I will just pretend, I'll just pretend that I know what they're talking about. And sometimes I don't, but with an e-reader, um, pretty much every single e-reader I've used personally and every, all the ones that I've seen on the market that I have come across have a built-in dictionary. And that is such a great, like, <laughs> benefit. I think especially if you are not reading in your first language, if that e-reader has a dictionary, it is so convenient to just be able to like tap the screen and get a definition. Um, my current one also has um, like internet functionality. So if I can't find a built-in dictionary word, I can actually search either Wikipedia or Google for it. It's not the fastest internet, it is pretty slow, but it is there if I need it. So it's pretty awesome in that sense. Another thing that is convenient about e-reading is annotations. It's funny because this is actually one of my cons as well. One of the good things is if you're someone who doesn't like marking up your books, um, but you kind of want to try out annotating, e-reading is so good for that because like you can annotate with no fear of kind of leaving any permanent marks. You can always delete the annotations if you don't want them. Um, I like that you can add notes, which is quite nice. Another huge benefit to e-reading is aside from the kind of upfront cost of purchasing an e-reader, if you are purchasing a dedicated e-reader, um, 
they're cheaper. <laughs> it's generally overall cheaper to consume ebooks than it is to consume physical. There are some exceptions. I think A, I rarely ever buy ebooks full price. Like it's just not a thing that I do. Ebooks almost always go on sale eventually. Um, and they're usually only about anywhere from between like a dollar to like five dollars on sales. They're definitely cheaper than hardcovers. Like I have rarely ever seen an ebook more expensive than a hardcover. I have occasionally seen ebooks that are like almost the price of a paperback or like just the same cost or like even a little bit more expensive than a paperback, which is kind of annoying. And I never, I will, I would never pay that kind of money for an ebook. Like I, re I really wouldn't, but it is what it is. Um, and like I said, there's always sales. Um, and so that's what I would recommend doing. Um, so you're definitely making a huge cost savings there. The other benefits in terms of cost saving is, and another thing that I think nowadays e-reading is really good for is if you have access to Overdrive or Libby and you live in a place where Overdrive has an agreement with either Kobo or Kindle, you can actually get your library books from Overdrive or Libby sent directly to your e-reader and read it straight from there. Um, and again, that is a huge cost savings because you are not paying you know, per book for the library. You might be paying for a library card, um, but you're not paying for the book itself, which is pretty cool. Another pro for um, e-reading is um, the kind of customizations that you can do with it in terms of the fonts. Um, so you can change the font. I know there's also fonts that are um, more friendly to dyslexic readers. Um, so that's a huge plus, And I think a huge plus for accessibility. You can like crank up the font, make it big if you need to. Um, and like you can adjust the spacing and the margins as well. And I think for me, that's a huge help because there are certain books that like I find hard to read because of the font, because of the size, et cetera, et cetera. And I think e-reading like eliminates that problem completely because you can completely customize it, which is awesome. There are certain eBooks that like have like crappy formatting that don't let you do that, but they are few and far between. Um, so that's one of the biggest pluses for me for e-reading in my opinion. Um, and then the last kind of major pro that I have for e-reading and kind of the main reason why I personally want to veer a little bit away from physical reading, even though I really love like reading physical books and annotating physical books, um, is, is for sustainability. I feel like for me personally, consuming and buying new products is like something that I can personally do to like curb my carbon footprint, so to speak. Um, obviously it's like, you know, sustainability is a lot bigger than just that. But in terms of like what I can do personally, that is like an easy swap out. I feel like swapping more towards e-reading and having a higher percentage of eBooks compared to my physical books, um, is something that I can work on personally. Um, is it futile? Maybe, but like every little bit counts, I guess, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then moving on to cons and in all honesty, I have a few cons here, but there's not a ton of cons because at the end of the day, like reading is reading, like no matter what format you're reading, you're still consuming the same story. So for me, like, there's not a lot of cons to e-reading. The first is, of course, if you are thinking of purchasing a dedicated e-reader, um, there is, of course, that upfront cost for the device. I feel like for me, it offsets the cost of all the books that you are able to get afterwards at like such a reduced rate. Um, also with something like Kindle, they have pretty good um, subscription plans, like Kindle Unlimited, I think is like $12.99 a month. If that selection is appealing to you, I think that's a really, really, great way to save some money. Um, I know Kobo also has a subscription plan. Uh, the books on it are not as great from what I've seen. So while the upfront cost might be a con, for me it's not the biggest con. I'm just mentioning it here in case. One thing that I will say is that it is harder to flip back and forth um, with ebooks. Like for example, I read a lot of fantasy. So sometimes there's like glossaries or like maps or whatever. And it, it can be pretty hard to kind of flip back and forth in an ebook. It's not as simple as like when you have a book, you can literally just like go back and forth on an e-reader. It's just, it's a little clunkier. It's not as streamlined. It's not as intuitive. Um, and so I often, I honestly, like if I'm reading an ebook, I pretty much never flip to the glossary. Um, whereas with a physical book, I, I would like something like Broken Earth Trilogy, I'm like constantly flipping <laughs> to the glossary to remind myself of all the different terms in, in this world. I can pretty much guarantee you though, like if I had that on an e-reader, I would not have looked 
of the glossary just because it is pretty inconvenient it's just not something I think of um, the other thing is formatting I feel like this happens most when you get like arcs from e like neck alley or something but the format can sometimes be a pain on e-readers like some ebooks just have the crappiest <laughs> formatting um, and it's not even just like arcs from neck alley that have this problem like some ebooks that you purchase have formatting problems which is super frustrating because like you think publishers would just get it right by now but they don't always so that is something to keep in mind especially if you're someone who reads so for example I read um, a poetry book last year um, and it had images and so it definitely like got skewed in the ebook I definitely think something like that reading physically would make more sense because it is like a set layout um, and it just didn't really work on my e-reader in particular. I mentioned annotations earlier as a pro. For me it's actually almost a con as well because I just really like physically annotating books. I really like the act of like underlining and highlighting things um, and adding sticky notes. I just that's just something that I personally really enjoy. Um, so for me, actually, e-reading, annotating while I'm e-reading is not as enjoyable for me. It's not something that I do as often. And if I'm e-reading, I actually tend to not annotate as much as I do when I'm physically reading. But that's obviously, like, very personal. So I'm keeping annotations in both the pro and the cons. Um, and then the last kind of con is depending on what device you end up using, it can be harder on the eyes. Um, if you get something with an e-ink like or paper-like screen, it's not a problem at all. Like it's exactly the same experience as you would have on uh, paper. However, if you choose to go for something like a tablet, like so I know Kindle Fire is a really popular one because it's very affordable. iPads are obviously like a big tablet contender you name it, like with the traditional kind of like LED, are they LED? I don't even know, but the, the light up screens, that can be definitely harder on the eyes. That being said, for me personally, I didn't think it was a huge issue um, back when I was still using my iPad for e-reading, um, but it is just something to keep in mind. Some people's eyes are more sensitive. You might want to look into like blue light filters or something like that if you are spending a lot of time e-reading on a kind of more traditional like backlit LED screen kind of thing. Anyway, those are kind of the pros and cons. Um, moving into the whole Kindle versus Kobo versus like whether you should get a tablet debate. Honestly, it really depends. <laughs> it really depends on you. I think the biggest question you have to ask yourself really is like what ecosystem do you want to live in? Because the thing is, once you start purchasing books from an ebook retailer, um, either Kindle or Kobo. I, I know there's others out there, but those are the two main ones that I know of. Um, but once you start purchasing books from there, it's really hard to move out of that ecosystem because all your books that you own are with that. So for me, I have never left Kobo as a company, um, as, as, a, as a brand, because I all my ebooks that I have purchased over the last 10 years are with Kobo because my first device was a Kobo because it was like the only e-reading device that you could buy in Canada. Um, back then. <laughs> so for me at this point, like 10 years into e-reading and buying ebooks and stuff, I would never ever get a Kindle just because I would never be able to get all those books onto a Kindle. Um, and same vice versa. Um, I think if you are starting fresh though, that is something to ask yourself. I know a lot of people are to have have talked about like wanting to kind of move away from Amazon and stop spending money on Amazon, which obviously owns Kindle. So if you're thinking of like starting to get into e-reading and like buying ebooks and stuff, um, and you don't have ebooks anywhere, like you're starting fresh and you don't want to support Amazon, like I'd say go with like Kobo or another company. Um, I, from what I know, Kobo is like the most comparable to Kindle in terms of the selection, in terms of the pricing. It's not a one-to-one -one match. There are certain books, of course, especially when we're talking self-published, um, books that are Kindle exclusive um, because Kindle just makes it so easy and Amazon makes it more like way more easy than other platforms to self-publish. From what I've seen, it is just kind of the industry standard for self-published books. Something to keep in mind, selection. In terms of price, I will say Kindle does tend to have a slightly lower price point than Kobo. If there are sales, um, they are, they're usually matched, but sometimes Kindle has sales that Kobo doesn't, whereas it doesn't really happen the other way around where Kobo has sales that Kindle doesn't. That being said, Kobo does have a price matching program. Um, and I've never used it personally, but I think you just like email them and you're like, hey, I just bought this book and I found it cheaper on another website. Can you like 
refund me. So, and then the other thing to consider uh, in terms of Kindle versus Kobo specifically is if you live in a country where there is like a library integration overdrive uh, affiliation, uh, look into what your region and your library um, has an affiliation with. So for example, in the States, typically speaking, from what I know, Overdrive works with Kindle and you can get your library books onto your Kindle. I'm not 100% about Kobo, but in Canada, for example, Kindle and Overdrive in Canada do not have that relationship. So in Canada, Kindle, you cannot borrow Libby, Libby books and have them on your Kindle. Kobo, however, does in Canada. So that's a huge factor for me personally, um, getting and staying with Kobo as well, because I can get all my library books on it. So like, why wouldn't I? And then in terms of whether or not you should go with something like an iPad, which is, which I do have here. Um, in all honesty, it's really hard to say because something like an iPad, a tablet, like even the Fire, what's it called? Amazon, the Kindle Fire tablet. Um, tablets do a lot more than just e-reading. You can, you know, browse the internet, you can go on social media, et cetera, et cetera. Like they do so much more. So they are more all encompassing devices um, and you can do a lot more with them. And then, and then if you do have one of those devices, you are not limited to just one ecosystem. You can have like Kindle books and Kobo books. You just have to download the app and you can read both. Um, so you do have a little bit more flexibility there if that is important to you. Um, and also, like I said, it is an all in one device. Like you don't have to worry about carrying two things. Like if you're traveling, you don't have to worry about bringing like an iPad and an e-reader kind of situation. Um, so that is quite nice. Um, for me personally, I also keep my iPad around for or um, manga. I subscribe to the Shonen Jump um, app, which gives me access to a lot of different manga. Um, and so obviously I can't get that on my e-reader, but I can have that on my iPad. Um, also any books that I have that are from Kindle, for example, like I said, Sword of Kaigen, um, and I have a couple other Kindle exclusive books as well. Um, I read them on my iPads. For me personally, like the biggest draw to have to using like a tablet type device is just to have like the one device that does it all. I do think in terms of the actual physical reading experience, I do think an e-reader is better. Um, a, because it's lighter, um, so it's easier on the hands, um, which is actually a big factor for me because I have like really weak hands and like joint pain all the time. And also the screen, it is obviously like, like I said, it's not, it might be a little bit harder on the eyes for you. So something to keep in mind. So now moving into kind of the last portion of this video, um, what to look for in an e-reader if you're on the market for one. Um, so I've broken this up into like major, medium, and like minor considerations. Um, but number one is of course cost. How much are you willing to pay for an e-reader? I know the Kindle, um, the most basic one starts at around $100 Canadian. Um, I think the Kobo baseline one, um, is either the Clara or I think they came out with like a slightly cheaper one that's like $10 cheaper, which is the stupidest marketing decision they ever made. Um, it's slightly more expensive than that. Um, the device that I have, like I said, is the Kobo, what is this called? The Libra H2O. Um, this was around $200 Canadian. So that's of course the number one consideration, like how much money do you have to spend in terms of that outright upfront investment? How much are you willing to spend? How much do you want to spend? That's something that you have to kind of figure out for yourself. The second thing to consider, I've already kind of touched on, but it's the screen. So um, is it a paper-like or e-ink type, type of screen, or is it going to be something like an iPad, um, which um, has a LED kind of screen? Um, obviously, something like an iPad is like way more expensive. I didn't even mention it before. It's like way more expensive than a traditional e-reader. But again, there are tablets that are cheaper. So for example, the Kindle Fire, which is like, I think 70 bucks Canadian, which is like a steal for a tablet, really. Um, the other thing to consider is size and weight. Um, so obviously my iPad is like this big and then my e-reader is this big and it's way lighter. For me, it's like the lighter, the better. The smaller, not necessarily the better. Because if you have watched some of my older vlogs, I have a, t I used to have the tiniest e-reader um, and you would basically have like maybe one paragraph a page. And it was cute, it was super portable. I really liked it for when I was, um, a student and I was traveling um, and I could just throw it in my backpack for school but uh, it was it was really small so I actually really like this size I believe this is a six inch but I'm not 100% sure and I know they have like one size that's slightly bigger as well the last thing I would say is like a major consideration is actually backlighting um, do you want backlighting on your e-reader in my humble opinion I would say if you can afford 
an e-reader with some sort of backlighting, absolutely go for it. My last two e-readers, this is the first e-reader I've had that has backlighting and it makes such a big difference. Not only like if you're reading at night, which I really like to do, but also if you're like in some sort of weird lighting, you can always just counteract it by like upping the backlight. And this type of backlight, because the screen is like a paper-like screen, even if it's backlit, it doesn't hurt your eyes. Um, so that's really nice. But aside from that, whether or not the lighting is adjustable, um, can you adjust the brightness? Can you adjust the tone? So like for example, my e-reader, you can adjust it so that it's like cooler or, or warmer, um, depending on the time of day, you can like play around with it. Um, so I really like that. Um, and then moving on to what I would consider like medium considerations. Number one is waterproof. Do you need it to be waterproof? Um, like I said, if you're someone who likes to read in the bathtub or something, I would definitely recommend getting a waterproof one. That's actually how I killed my first one. I'm pretty sure my bag got rained on and my e-reader just like died after that. Mine is waterproof. I don't really care for the waterproofness. It's just there were other things about this e-reader that pushed me to get this over another one. And then another thing that... I would consider a medium consideration. You might think it's a small consideration, but do you want buttons? Mine has buttons. So you can flip the page using the buttons. For me, this was actually the main reason why I splurged for this one, um, because for me, clicking the screen is just not the most comfortable. I like having the buttons. I like having kind of that ledge to hold my e-reader with that, so that I don't, it won't like interfere with my reading experience. It is also like an accessibility consideration as well. Like I know touch screens are not necessarily the most accessible thing. Um, so having the buttons can be helpful. Another thing to think about is Wi-Fi capabilities. Do you need Wi-Fi capabilities? Um, again, this is my first e-reader that has had Wi-Fi capabilities. My past ones didn't. So I had ev every time I want a new book, Every time I want to sync a new book to it, I have to hook it up to my laptop. I have to download the books into it. So it can be a bit of a pain and less convenient um, and definitely takes away from the convenience of the e-reader in general. Um, so something to think about there. Um, I, I'm pretty sure most e-readers these days come with Wi-Fi. Like I am really talking about like archaic ones from like back in the day that did not have them. <laughs> um, and then the last kind of like medium consideration I would suggest is thinking about format. Um, what format you want to read. This is not necessarily a, a major consideration for me because like I said, if you are in an ecosystem with like Kindle or Kobo, um, if you're buying books from those websites, you are automatically getting a book that works with your e-reader. The question is like if you, you know, for example, with indie published books, sometimes you can buy ebooks directly from the website and it's something to consider in terms of format. So the Kindle only reads, to my knowledge, only reads Mobi, which is like the format that Kindle reads, um, and PDFs. Um, I think there might be like another one in there, but it's a very short list, whereas a Kobo can pretty much read anything except for a Mobi. <laughs> um, so EPUBs, Word documents even like and PDFs and so and so on and so forth and then for me also like the other thing is with like NetGalley eARCs. NetGalley eARCs are compatible with both because you can have it sent to your Kindle directly um, but you can also download a protected EPUB to download onto your e-reader if your e-reader um, can read EPUBs. So something to consider I guess if you are not if you are planning to kind of branch out and get books from other sources, like I said, directly from like publishers and whatnot, um, and not buying it through like the Kobo store or the Kindle store. Um, and then like minor considerations, things that I would almost consider negligible, A, because like the market is just so standardized now, um, and B, just things that I think are not really a, a major problem. Battery life, I know there's like slight differences between them, but like A, battery life generally on e-readers is pretty good <laughs> like you like you might have to charge it like once every few weeks I probably charge my e-reader like once every two weeks or so depending on how how much I'm using it um but also like for me we live in a day and age where most of us have stuff that needs to be charged every day if not more often so like for me battery life is not a huge deal because of because how, of how used to charging things we are um, as a society. For me, it's a minor consideration, but just something to think about as well. Um, annotation options. I think between Kindle and Kobo, they're very similar. Like um, you can highlight and stuff, but like obviously if you are using something with like a screen, um, like an LED screen, there's also like color highlight options. If you're someone who's like really into color coding, that's also something to consider. Do I feel like that would ever be like a make or break? Um, deal breaker thing in my head no but 
Again, something that to put out there um, for consideration. Um, and then the last thing is smart co cover, smart cover compatibility. Like, is it important to you to, you know, when you open the cover, it turns on on its own? Like, <laughs> is that important to you? Again, to my knowledge, pretty much all of the mainstream devices have that fe like feature, um, but I'm not 100% sure. So just something to think about. Anyway, I have been talking for ages. Um, hopefully I was like semi-coherent. I tried to plan this video out, but like you guys know me by now. I'm like super chaotic. And so I tried to be less chaotic today, but I probably wasn't. Um, but yeah, that is kind of all I wanted to talk about today. I'm sure I've left out some stuff, um, but I'm excited to chat with you guys in the comments down below. Um, and hopefully this was helpful to at least one person out there. But yeah, that is it for today. Um, if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any other tips and tricks or things to look out for or some pros and or cons that I haven't thought of. And if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.